So hello everyone, I'm, uh, I'm Davi, uh, you can pronounce that like D-A-V, like the instructor, Davi. Uh, I'm from Iceland, I teach at a uh, club called VBC in Iceland, and uh, I've been doing this for nine years. I've been on my own since 2012, I got my purple belt back then, and my instructor uh, left the country, so I've been on my own since then. And uh, I'm going to teach you guys something about like playing guard around the guillotine. So I'm not actually going to go into the mechanics of finishing the guillotine. If some of you have trouble finishing, uh, please call me over and I can help you. But I want to go, I'm going to go through a movement, which I just refer to as the crunch, which will both help you with finishing your guillotine and sweeping if you don't or aren't able to finish. And then I'm going to talk a lot about uh, the purpose of your feet when playing around the guillotine. So how you uh, can stop your opponent from, from doing bad stuff and, and stuff like that. So before we get into it, I, I am going to go into this thinking that everybody is warmed up. But since we're going to do a lot of stuff with the neck, I want you guys to I wanna do some extra stuff for that. So. Uh, Let's just like sit down or get on your knees and go up and down. Side to side. Use the shoulders. And half circles in front. And back. All right, so make sure you have a little bit of space around you, just a little bit. You're gonna come up on your toes and up on your head. Uh, if this is hard, you can put your hands on the floor. Uh, just don't hurt yourself. So we get up and we're gonna roll back and forth. Now, we're going to do side to side. This one's much harder. So again, if you can't do this, put your hands on the floor to support yourself. We're going to go to the sides. And on the back. And we bridge. Again, rocking back and forth. All right, so um, I'm going to start about talking about the uh, a uh, movement I just called the crunch. Then we're going to get into what I just referred to, the, the guillotine guard. And we're going to go into butterfly guard, and then we're going to connect the two. And if we have time... Uh, no, oh, thank you. <laughs> we're going to go into what we can do if our opponent does uh, that stuff. Uh, got it. Yeah, so, all right, so the first thing I wanted to do, the crunch. What I'm going to do is force him to do a front roll. And I'm going to do that by taking his head, pushing it in under his shoulder, and lifting the shoulder up and over, and get him through. I'm going to use my front headlock to do that. You can either have an overhook, grabbing uh, my arm and guillotine grip, or I can go under hook. It just depends what's happening in the roll. So maybe I'm going uh, 
arm out guillotine, like high elbow, and he grabs my arm here, then I might shoot through for an underhook instead if I can't finish the, the submission. If I already have the arm over, then I'm gonna just go with that. Uh, what we're gonna do to start with is not something I would do in a roll, but it's gonna help you figure out uh, how to do the movement that we're gonna use uh, later. So, when I'm here, I'm gonna step my leg out and I'm gonna do like a baseball slide. So I'm gonna slide my hip through. Do not sit down and pull back. That's gonna hurt your, your technique. So I'm gonna shoot myself through and I'm gonna use my shoulder to push his head under. So I'm here, I step out, I shoot my leg and I push my shoulder in and under. So I'm going here, I'm lifting up, pushing to force him over. And from here, you can bridge up on your head and walk in. You can go for your darces or guillotine or anacondas and what have you. So you can, uh, you can start if you want up on the arms, but you can do it on the elbows too, from normal turtle. So I start here with my front headlock. I can, I can go uh, for the overhook. I can go for the underhook. I step out and I'm gonna shoot my leg through. So I'm shooting my hip under and out. Once I do that, I push my shoulder and elbow through and I lift his shoulder. So I go here and I lift him over. I bridge up on my neck and I go through. So one more time. Again, the objective is to push his head down. So when you shoot, go under it. Don't sit back and do this. It's not going anywhere. So I need, need that curve in the spine. So again, when I go here, I'm pushing his head down. I shoot through, under, and I flip. All right, any questions? Let's try it out. So did everyone get that? The foot? Yeah, we're going to be using that through the whole class. So if you didn't, please let me know and I can help you out in the, the next drill. So uh, in the next drill, I'm going to go, uh, or now I'm going to go over how to kind of keep how we uh, play the guillotine guard uh, for lack of a, a better name. That's what I call it. So <laughs> most people, when they throw on a good guillotine, they hook the hip, they throw their leg over and we end up here. So I just call it the guillotine guard because I mostly don't do anything from there except the guillotine. Um, but a lot of people they have, uh, they just think, oh, I have a guillotine grip. I have my feet in position. Now I can do the guillotine. And if you can't, everything's fucked up. Um, and that's what I want to change uh, your thought process about that. So when you get in here, what people need to, to realize is that my arms now, I do not have a guillotine, I have a front headlock. This is a form of control. The guillotine is the submission, not the grip. When I go for the submission and he taps, that was a guillotine. When I'm holding, I have a front headlock, which is a very strong form of control. My feet, they have a purpose. I'm not just throwing them in position and keeping them there. They have a purpose and they have a separate purpose. Uh, a lot of people think that like, this leg, I'm throwing it over just so he, can, he can't jump over. So one of the, the most utilized uh, defenses is him jumping over my legs. So yeah, over here. And once he gets that like, crossbody uh, position, I'm not able to finish or it's harder to finish. And he can put on the Von Fluccio open and stuff like that. So a lot of people think, oh, I throw this leg over and he can't jump anymore, which is true but it is a uh, passive job for this leg. So I put this leg over and he can't jump. It doesn't have to work for it, but it has another utility, an active utility. But what I want to talk about first is the bottom leg, because in my opinion, in my humble opinion, it is the more important one. So this leg, it hooks the hip and it is actively stopping him from jumping over, actively. So I hook the hip, and if he jumps over, I'm blocking him here. This leg, I throw it over and I hook his far side. So my heel is hooking his far side. So another defense he can use is 
to roll to this, that side. If he walks to that side or jumps, he's going into a guillotine. Like, he's making it easier for me to, to finish. But if he rolls here, we end up in the same position we uh, rolled into. We can go to top, but he got up. And I don't want that. So, it has an active job where I hook him, and if he goes, I can follow. So he's pulling me on top. He's not going away from me. Uh, so I do that so I, I'm able to, to follow the submission. So when I'm here, I hook, he goes up. Uh, sorry, he rolls. And I follow him from here. I can still finish. So when I get in, I'm hooking the hip, stopping him from jumping over. I'm hooking the far side, stopping him from rolling. And that's what I want to do with my, my legs. So don't just throw them in, thinking that uh, they just have to be in the way. Now, when, I, when I'm in the position, I'm gonna use, again, the crunch to finish. So, however you finish the, uh, the guillotine, whether it be high elbow or arm in, doesn't matter. I want you to add the crunch. So, what I'm doing is, uh, there's a UFC fighter, I don't think he fight, fights anymore, uh, Martin Kampmann from uh, Denmark, who showed me this uh, when I learned this first. Uh, so, what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to connect my elbow to my hip. Uh, there's a head in the way, but I want to get it as close as I can. I pinch my elbow in, I push my shoulder down, and I'm doing like a, a crunch with my, my abs. So, I'm crunching into the side, trying to connect that elbow to my hip here. And I'm doing that to create the same crunch that we did before. So I'm pushing his head under to finish. So I'm here, here we go. I'm pushing, I'm lifting up with my guillotine and I'm pushing in for the submission. Whether you go arm in or arm out, doesn't matter. So I want you to add that crunch. I want you to uh, have your opponent jumping from side to side or rolling. Once you f uh, feel that you can hold him, go for the guillotine. If you're having trouble with the guillotine, you can call me over and I can help you with the mechanics. But I want you guys to start from front headlock. So there are a lot of, lot of uh, ways to, to set up the, uh, there are a lot of tweaks to the setup from the front headlock. Like some people, they just slide out and throw their leg over and once they have space, they put this one in. Um, I'm gonna show you just a basic way to go. So from here, I'm gonna grab my grip. I'm gonna walk into him and lift up. And uh, if you're doing this, this for the first time, just walk all the way up, doesn't matter. I, you, you wouldn't want to do that in a roll, but just walk up, just stand up. So from here, I'm gonna hook his hip before I sit down, very crucial. Because as soon as I sit down, if I go here, I'm under him, he jumps. And I don't want that. So my bottom, bottom leg comes in before my top one. So I'm here, I hook, I sit down, he jumps, and I block. Once I sit down, I throw this leg over, and if he wants to roll, he pulls me with him. So I'm blocking him from, from leaving. Now, if you're more advanced, and you have a feel for it, here, you can go a little, uh, walk a little less into him. So I can just walk in here and sit down. So I slide my hip, don't pull him over you, slide yourself under. I hook the hip so he can go, I hook the far side so he can roll, and now I go for the crunch. I push in, and I finish the guillotine. So, have your partner uh, jump sometimes. Sometimes he'll roll, you set it up from the front headlock, and once you feel you have good position, you can finish the submission. All right, any questions? All right, one, two. Did everyone get the guilty? Did everyone use the crunch? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, that's what I like to hear. All right, so yeah, the crunch, uh, if you haven't been using it, start using it. It makes a lot of difference when you're doing your front headlock stuff. Um, a lot of people, uh, they were asking about the arm in guillotine. It is the harder uh, submission to finish, in my opinion. Um, but it is a better control uh, kind of a utility grip if you want to do other stuff. 
Um, but the arm placement, because a lot of people were asking about it. Uh, so I want to crush this windpipe. Uh, I need my forearm the, 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 uh, by the wrist, like maybe five centimeters or something. Uh, I need my bone on his uh, trachea. So when I'm here, a lot of people, they go too far and their forearm go like at, a, at, a, at an angle where I'm not lined up with the trachea or they go too short and I'm, I'm up here. So I want it, uh, what, what's it called, perpendicular? Yes. Yes, okay, so I want it perpendicular with the trachea, here. And when I'm pulling up, I'm just going straight, straight up. I'm not going through, just going straight up. Um, when I'm doing that, uh, I want to kind of, so I heard an um, analogy by uh, Ryan Hall a long time ago, like a, of a trash compactor. So when you're like pushing on one side, you want the, the pressure on the other side to go, to, to go against it. If they're missing, uh, it's not going to be optimal. So what I want to do is, as I'm pulling up, I'm using my shoulder to push his head into the choke at the same time. If I'm just lifting up, um, I might just be like moving him into my shoulder. I want to push at this, uh, uh, against it. So you could, uh, you could uh, use this too with other submissions, sorry. Uh, if I have an ankle lock. So if I have an ankle lock and I'm just lifting up, not a lot is going to happen unless he's stiff and he's going to feel pain uh, in the, uh, the Achilles tendon. But what I want to do is, as I'm lifting up, I'm also like pushing my shoulder down, I can arch, but I need to, to push down on the other side. So if I'm just pulling or just pushing, I'm gonna be missing out on uh, some, some uh, force there. All right, so any questions before I go into to the butterfly? Yes. Yes. What are you gonna do with uh, his, his body? You know? He's like this, and you just do this. Yeah, okay, so that's actually what, uh, part, of, part of the class. Yeah, so we're going to define uh, five ways for my opponent to, to defend. That's the jump, where he jumps over my legs. Uh, the roll, where he rolls away. It's going to be the stack, where he's taking pressure off his neck by straightening it out, if he lifts his hip. Uh, the hand fight, and then the pull out, where he's trying to, to, to muscle his way out and pull back. Um, we're going to try to to get all of that, all of those uh, in the class. So you've all, already seen the uh, the jump where he jumps over. I'm using my legs to stop him. We're going to go into this in the butterfly too. You've already seen the roll. Again, I'm using my legs. If he's pulling out, if he's pulling away. If he does that, I can switch my legs and stand up, whether I'm in the guillotine guard or the uh, the butterfly. I'm not going to go a lot into it, but it's just basically just me standing up. And from there, I, I have a turtle again, and uh, we can attack from there. If he's fighting my arms, um, so if I have like a high elbow, if he's fighting and I can't finish, I'm gonna go for that underhook, and I can switch to the sweep, which we're gonna do. And if I have an arm over and he goes through the arms and I'm not able to finish, again, I'm going into the sweep. Uh, and then there was a stack, and the stack is something we're gonna do now. So, butterfly, again, my feet have a purpose. If I'm passive with my hooks, so 90% of the time, if I lie down and I'm passive with my hooks, he's gonna jump over. So everyone who knows this is gonna do it. So I need a way to keep him there. And again, that's gonna be my legs. So, I wanna fall to the side of the head. Doesn't matter if I'm in butterfly or some other guard, if I have a front headlock, and I'm trying to get to the guillotine, I'm gonna fall to the head. So I'm gonna fall to his head on this side. I'm not falling to my back and definitely not to the other side, unless I'm going for some kind of sweep. So, my legs. My top hook, so if I'm leaned to one side, my top hook is gonna hook high. It's gonna hook by his hip, and I'm gonna pinch my knee into his ribs. If I'm hooking low, I can't reach his body as well. So I'll show it to the other, on the other side. Like, if I'm high, I can pinch into him. If I'm down low, I can't reach as well. So I hook high by the hip. My bottom hook to the side which, uh, that I'm leaning is gonna kick out. So that hook hooks low. Uh, if I'm hooking at his hip, and uh, he can move his knee, like step in closer and kind of walk into me, 
if I'm hooking low and I'm kicking out, uh, it, it makes him harder. It makes it harder for him to step close to walk into me. So I'm keeping him away. Now I fall to my side. I have a high hook. I have a low hook. This hook pins in. The other one kicks. And now I want to keep him from walking me to my back, and definitely from walking to the other side. So I keep on my side here. He walks, and he's just going to turn. So I have to have my hooks active to keep him from going, uh, walking me down. So we go from the other side. So this hook, this hook, it goes high, and this one goes low. I'm pinching my knee, and I'm kicking out. So as I'm here, I have my front headlock. I pinch my knee in, I kick out, and if he walks into me, I can keep him away. Don't buckle over, like end up on your side. We can still go from here, but it's not as strong. So I want to keep him here. If he walks into me again, I want him to just turn me, or not go at all. All right, so the head. Where do I want to keep his head? Because this is something you need to know uh, with the guillotine too not just the sweep, which we're gonna do. So I want his head up in my armpit. So I don't wanna keep him down here. If I'm down here, there's a lot of slack in the submission and the sweep. And the lower he is, the more weight he can put on my hip and it makes it harder for me to, to move around. And if he jumps, it's harder for me to go because my hip is stuck. But if I keep him high and his weight is on my upper body, now, when he jumps, I can move my hip and uh, follow him wherever he goes. So, if he jumps and I have active hooks, this happens a lot. If he rolls and I have active hooks, he's going to take me with him. We go for a ride. Now, the stack. And what do we do then? Um, for now, we're going to stick with a butterfly. I'm going to show you how to do it if, you, if we're in the guillotine guard. But with the stack, what he's doing is because, uh, because I'm using that crunch to push his head in, he's lifting his hip, and that'll take tension off his neck and may, uh, kind of soften the, the submission. As he do, does that, the, the higher his hip comes, the easier it is for me to sweep. So I can either get it off of a failed guillotine, or I can... Uh, kind of push into the guillotine to make him lift up. But I'm going for my crunch, I'm lifting up, and I step this leg on the floor to, to uh, push over. Now, I preferably want to uh, follow him over. As he goes, I, I kick and I follow him. I take my leg out, and I can go into my submissions. I can go into uh, uh, the anaconda, the dars, the guillotine, or just take my sweep. If he doesn't lift up, so he just stays there, I can do the same thing. Like if I'm going against a bigger man, it can be hard to move him, but I'm using my crunch. You have to, have to use the crunch. You can't, can't, can't just kick him over unless you're super strong. So I'm using my crunch, pushing in while I push. Makes it a lot harder. And from there, I can switch in to my submissions again. So just like with the, with the other drill, I want the person on top. Sometimes he's going to jump over. As he jumps, I have active hooks, and I can follow him. If he overcompensates, I can follow him all the way over. If he tries to roll, I'm going to follow him, and I catch top. You can if you want. Like, if he pulls out, and I can't, uh, I can't pull him back, you can, like, shoot your legs and try to lift yourself up. If, uh, and then if he just stays here or if he stacks, I can push, go for the crunch, push his head under while I lift for an easy sweep. Any questions? Let's do it. One, two, three. Oh Any questions? No. So now we've gone over the guillotine guard, we've gone over the butterfly guard, you've seen how to, to keep your opponent there, you've seen how to use the crunch to finish and to sweep. Now, you need to combine the positions. Uh, sometimes, like if you're in uh, turtle, 
the front headlock, you're gonna probably gonna set up the guillotine guide. But if you get the the uh, guillotine grip or the front headlock from the butterfly, you need to know what to do, other than just sweep if you want to get the submission. So um, <coughs> there are a lot of different leg configurations. Some involve half guard, some involve a close guard. Not, we're not going to go over that today. Uh, we're just going to marry these two. So as I'm here, as I get my uh, butterfly, I'm again. I'm going to fall to my side. Some people uh, sometimes you might feel that as you're as you're sitting, you can switch your leg over and then flip the other one. But it's dangerous because as I'm here, I have no like all my weight is on my feet. I'm kind of like crunched up, and if I switch, he jumps. So uh, what I like to do is take an intermediate step. I'm going to fall to my side. I'm going to pinch my knee in, make it hard for him to jump. If he jumps now, it's hard, and I can switch. Now, when I do the switch, bottom leg comes first. It's the same thing as before. I want to hook his hip to stop him from jumping over. If you're having trouble getting in, uh, in between this leg, you can lower it a little bit down and kick out to create space. But I want to get, uh, I keep pinching, and when I switch, I go hook here, hook on the hip. Once that in, and once that's in, he can't jump, and then I can take this one out. I can throw it over, I hook to the side, and now I can finish the guillotine. Now, if I can't finish the guillotine, and he, for instance, lifts his hip, or he's uh, going for my arms, I can switch back. Same thing. I do it in reverse. So as I'm here, if he lifts his, he stacks me, and I'm not able to finish, I go in reverse. I keep the hook on the hip to stop him from jumping, and I hook his leg. I pinch my knee in, and I go through. Now his hip is high, so it's easier for me to flip him over. So I can either go from the butterfly to the guillotine guard, or from the guillotine guard and back. You just need to be aware that the first hook keeps him from jumping, and when you go back, the hook that you leave behind, oh, no, sorry, the first hook that you put in, it keeps him from jumping. So that's the stronger defense, and that's the defense we want to keep him from, from getting. So again, we go butterfly, I fall to my side, <laughs> you can go for the sweep straight away, you can add the defenses, if he jumps, I can stop him, if he rolls, I can follow him, uh, if he stacks, uh, I can sweep him. Uh, if I want to switch for the, the guillotine guard, I'm going to kick and I can go through. Uh, when I have a strong hook, I can throw the other one. Now again, he can jump, he can roll, he can stack, whatever you want. You can ask him if you want to uh, try something in particular. You can finish the guillotine. Uh, if you can't get it, you can switch back, pinch the knee, go through. You can go for the, the sweep. So you can try uh, whatever you want and you can uh, whatever you feel that you haven't gotten quite, quite uh, well enough, you can uh, focus on that. If you are, if submissions are your whole world, you can go for that. If you wanna go the utility route, you can do that or you can do both. All right, so let's try it. Hey, Tito. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> now we've, we've looked at the butterfly, we've looked at the guillotine guard, we've looked at how to finish, how to use the crunch to finish, we've looked at how to use the, how to use the uh, crunch to, to sweep, if we can't get the finish. Um, then we have other stuff like what if he jumps over my legs, um, what if he is able to walk me to my back or even to the other side. Um, there's more to the system, but uh, this is kind of the core of it. Uh, what, what I feel that you need to know to, to, to play the front headlock uh, and around the guillotine. So if you want to know more, like uh, my favorite is like if people jump over, how to defend that and how to get out. Uh, if you want to know more, please feel free to, to ask me and, and uh, I'll show you whatever. All right, so thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you for listening and I hope that you can use what you learned today. So thank you.